Hi, in a previous video, we have seen what is a loop and what are the different types of loop in a programming environment. Now, in this video, we're going to see different examples with for loop in MATLAB environment. So if you want to learn more about a loop, I'll link down the video about the loop below, and then you can learn about that uh, in that video. So let's jump back to MATLAB and see how for loop works. I have opened a MATLAB script and saved it. Now we will use the for loop to demonstrate the example. And also at the end of the video, we will see how to use the for loop to calculate a sum of a series starting from 1 to 100. Okay, let's see the example first. So I'll define the for loop. Let's write for. And as you can see, it turned blue. So that means it's a command. Now it asks for a condition after the for. So as we've defined, we can define a counter as a variable. And this counter variable will go from some value to some value to actually uh, demonstrate how many times that we want this counter to be to be run. So let's say counter is one. Um, we'll use a colon operator to signify the final number. Let's say we have two. So the counter variable will have one and two in its elements. Now we can write an instruction to execute. Let's say we write this just one command. So we want to display this command this many times. So we'll do an end after four. So this, this is a for end command. Don't forget to put the end here because it's going to show an error. So this signifies that whatever is in, in between these four and n, it will execute this many number of times. For this case, we have just two. So it will go two times and execute it twice. So after running this, we should see in the output two once, meaning it will come here, it will see counter as one, and then it will execute this display command. It will see n, so it will go back and check whether counter two is valid or not, because it will increase one value. So it sees that yes, counter has a value of two. So it will again come back and execute this command again, go to end, and again loop back. Now it will test the condition if the counter is equal to three or not. As there is no three here, it will see the condition as false and break the for loop. So let's just run it and see how many times we see the output. Now, as you can see, there are two ones here. So as I've defined two and one to two, it goes and it displays two variables or two different parameters. So if we change it from one to three, it should define it should print three different ones in our output environment. Um, if we run it, as you can see, um, we can select any number of iteration and it should show that. So that is the example. Now let's go and see how to use this for loop to calculate the sum of a series. I have opened another script here to show you guys how to use this for loop to calculate a sum of series which goes from 1 to 100. So first we need a variable to define so that it can start from somewhere. So define a variable as a counter. So it will as uh, act as a counter, so it will count. So I will explain that a little bit uh, later. So I'll define a variable sum. We can we can we could have defined another variable name too. I'll define it as zero. Now I will use a for loop. And now let's just use let's say n as a as a counter for for loop. So we will define how many times n should run. Um, that that will define the loops number. So here n should go from one to hundred because we need the series from 1 to 100. So we'll run that. And then second line should be the one that contains sum 
equals to, so some variable will be assigned to sum plus, now here's the part, we'll put the n variable here, put a semicolon to suppress it, and I'll put n here. So let's just go to one by one line to see what ha what is happening here. So if we go, go here, the sum variable is initialized as zero. So now after this line, the sum variable has zero value. Okay, now if, if it comes here, it sees a for loop, okay. Now the n is defined from one to 100. So for the first pass, n has a variable uh, value of one. Okay, n is one after this line, then it comes to this line. Now this sum is, this is an assignment operator, meaning whatever is calculated here, it will be assigned to this variable sum. Okay, so here the sum has a value of zero, so it will put zero here, plus n has a value of one, so it will put one here. So the first pass will be zero plus one, and that zero plus one equals to one will be assigned to this sum variable. So now sum variable becomes one. It will see an end, it will go back and increase the number from uh, n from one to two. Now for the second pass, n has a variable value two. It will come here. Now the sum value is one because we just updated the sum value. So now one plus n is two. So that's three and then so on. So it will go back, increase the n, put the sum value and so. So if we run this, the sum should show us exactly um, what is the summation for the, for, the, um, for the series. Okay, so as you can see, the sum value has 5050. Five, five, we can also write here sum and it should show us the value. So as you can see, we can calculate a series um, and with a, with a for loop, and this is the way to do it. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.